Diary of a Mid-30s Girly. Welcome to Diary of a Mid-30s Girly, the podcast for the last bitch in her friend group to get her shit together. And today we are talking about falling off, why it happens, and how to get back in the saddle. Let's get into it. So long-term subscribers of this channel may have noticed that I haven't kind of been around in a minute. The astrology girly in me wants to blame it on the eclipse and Mercury retrograde and all the things, but you know, I'll take responsibility this time. But I do feel like I kind of have to explain briefly what happened. Basically, if you recall, at the end of last video, I was like, oh, hey, like I'm thinking about like doing some coaching. If you're interested, like DM me on Instagram. Long story short, more of you messaged me than I was expecting which has obviously been so great it's been so much fun and I am proud of myself for just diving into something instead of like spending six months thinking about diving into something um that being said (laughs) it turns out that starting a small business can be overwhelming if you have no idea what you're doing as a result of me taking that on other things in my life took a back seat, specifically, obviously, this YouTube channel. Blah, blah, blah. All this to say, I fell the f*** off. And today I am coming back to talk about it because I really believe that it happens to us all. But why? Now let me start by saying I'm going to gloss over the obvious, okay? During this episode, Focus on something that I think we all fall prey to. The mistake of thinking that you can do it all at once. And more specifically, thinking that you can start doing it all at once. Now I'm going to do my best to explain this by regurgitating a metaphor I heard the other day from a YouTuber named James Lim. He did say in his in the video that I was listening to that it wasn't even his metaphor. So I actually don't know who the original creator of this concept is um but he explained it in this video like really elegantly I think the gist is this projects are like planes and yeah you can have a lot of them in the sky at once but they take off because of how much energy and focus it takes to get them into the air they take off one at a time right so back to my life my favorite topic um I thought that I was like on a roll with YouTube. I conflated being on a roll, aka being consistent, with like having it down, meaning it being like automatic and not really taking a lot of my like mental energy, if that makes sense, right? Like I didn't have shit down. After a a few weeks of posting these episodes, like I did start to find some flow, like, oh, you know, film this and outline here and like as soon as you import the footage do this quick right so I got like not even I don't I didn't even get a flow down I was like starting to get a flow down okay but it was like the second I remotely started to find that flow in my life bang I decided to take on a whole new project my YouTube stuff it was not cruising at altitude let's put it that way it was definitely still in its like takeoff climbing um stages and yeah I was not ready to try and get another plane in the air and so when I did and I tried to get the plane of like working with you guys one-on-one into the air I totally just let the YouTube airplane crash and burn and boy did it ever which brings me to our next chapter self-sabotage This is why I will never stop doing shadow work on myself. And it's something that I've touched on actually the last few weeks uh, talking to some of my new clients. But we all know like the subconscious runs you, right? Honestly, I thought I was good because if you saw one of my previous episodes, I was talking about how like I was able to finally acknowledge for the first time that I have this like hardcore fear of being seen. And I thought that acknowledging it was the hardest part and like working through it and like proving to myself that, that it was safe and stuff. Um, I, I don't know. I thought I was over it. Joke's on me because actually it is very deep rooted and I'll probably get back to that in a second. But I also realized that I had another deep subconscious fear. I'm still kind of working through this, but I thought I'd share it with you anyway. 
I think I'm beginning to realize that I might truly be afraid of peace. (laughs) It's horrible. I think it has something to do with, well, first of all, I think somewhere deep in my subconscious, I was conflating like peace and boredom. But yeah, like here I am on this channel, I'm preaching about looking for friction and eliminating it and creating flow and, you know, ease. That makes me sound like I'm like a spiritual channel, which I'm not, even though I believe in a lot of that stuff. Anyway, I I digress. Point is, yeah, and here I was doing things in my life that did create that sense of flow and ease and like in, in certain areas. But then in other areas, it was like the second things got easy, the second they got peaceful, quiet, remotely predictable, bang, I would want to blow it up somehow. I'm starting to think my nervous system is addicted to chaos, possibly. And I would never have said that consciously, but somehow I always seem to create chaos for myself. And I think that that's really interesting. Now, the thing that actually made me understand this has nothing to do with YouTube or coaching or anything. It's actually my current like day job. So a lot of you guys know I work a shift job here in LA, right? I work a certain shift like a couple days a week, right? And so I've lived some variation of this day a hundred times. Like it's the morning time and I'm doing whatever. Maybe I'm cleaning. Maybe I'm working on YouTube, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I know I have to start getting ready for work at a certain time so that I can leave by a certain time so I am not late, right? And yet every single time I would blow past that like start getting ready deadline, I would inevitably have to end up rushing out the door and rushing to work. So one day last week, I was like, okay, I have had enough with this. I have to right? because something I have been working on my clients with is like experimenting with solutions. So I decided to follow my own advice. I'm like, let me try getting fully ready in the morning and not saving it for the afternoon. I try this, right? With so little to do, I was actually totally ready to go like 15 minutes before I actually had to leave. And I don't know if neurotypical people can relate to this man. I I genuinely don't think that they can. But I hated it. I just had this overwhelming feeling of like, well, what do I do now? You know, with this 15 minutes that I have, like, I'm not gonna go to work 15 minutes early, sorry. Like maybe I'll leave five minutes earlier than I normally would. 15 minutes isn't really long enough to like stay here and like get started on a script or a video or anything. So like, what do I, you know? And like, I could have just relaxed. I could have like gone on my phone and like chilled. I don't know. It's just funny because as someone who always claims that I have like a million things to do, like I suddenly had no idea what to do with myself. The feeling of not rushing out the door was so like unfamiliar and strange. I just hated it. And I haven't really done it since. All this to say though, I think the second my brain can see peace and predictability like looming in the horizon, Um, It's like, nope, pivot, chaos. Like it just, yeah, I don't know. I grew up in chaos and and I can't help but wonder if my brain tries to subconsciously recreate that because it's familiar. I do see a pattern in my life of complete novelty seeking, but I also see this pattern of putting things down right as I sense that I'm about to get bored with them so that I can lose all familiarity with that in the time that I put it down and then when I pick it back up it creates this like false sense of like being a beginner again which I guess I really love for some reason but that sucks you know what I mean because I feel like the people who get to turn their passions and hobbies and stuff into careers do so because they demonstrate some kind of like mastery over it and and like how is that ever going to happen for me if the second I catch a whiff of momentum I'm like all right bye like you know (sighs) the unfortunate part is I'm still trying to come up with a workaround for all this and uh I don't have it yet but I'll let you know if I come up with something so subscribe (laughs) No, I'm kidding. I do have an inkling that I want to talk about though. And that is getting back on the horse. As much as I love that plane metaphor from earlier, I've realized that some parts of it are more valuable 
for me personally than others. Like, like on the one hand, yes, don't put two planes on the runway at once. Got it. Where I think I need to divert away from this metaphor is that maybe I don't need to view every time I drop the ball as like me letting a plane crash. Because I think that's what I've been doing. And honestly, it has created a lot of negative energy around the situation. And then when it's time to restart whatever it was, I like I don't end up feeling like I'm just picking up where I left off. I feel like I'm having to build a whole new plane from scratch. Right? And like that's usually not even actually true, but that, but that ends up being my emotional reality. You know what I mean? So it creates a lot of resistance. I don't know, this feeling of like I can never show my face again or oh, like if I'm going to build a new plane, it needs to be a hundred times better than the other plane so that no one can ever say anything to me, even though I know that they're all secretly thinking. Like, (laughs) eventually I had to be like, Danielle, ma'am, nobody expects that of me except for my fucking self, okay? And in fact, my first video back should be about falling off because it fucking happens, you know? And speaking of falling off, that as cliched, as it is that I think is the metaphor that I need to kind of use going forward when I'm in these situations right like I didn't let a plane crash and burn I just was you know riding a horse why did I make that noise I don't know (laughs) um and I was on it for a minute I thought it was good and I was having a good time and then bam I fell off and all I need to do is get back on the horse and who cares if you look clumsy swinging your leg over and kind of (laughs) like trying to pull yourself put foot in stirrup and just try to like find that good groove again, you know? Recognize you will probably find yourself on the ground again in the near future. But if you just keep getting back on the horse, eventually you're going to end up where you want to go. So this is me reaching for some low hanging fruit, just putting my first little foot in that stirrup. And uh, it's not my most riveting content ever, but I just feel like I had to you know, rip the bandaid off. So as you know, I have always been in the practice of responding to every single comment. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, any topics you want me to talk about, I will see you in the comment section. I love you and I'll see you soon.